Hi everyone and welcome back to a new type of tutorial that is aimed to help explain how to get better at Unreal Engine over time. And so we're not looking at doing anything in one specific way or one specific mechanic, but more in general, like how do you actually understand Unreal Engine, blueprinting and how to actually make your own code. One of the main questions I get a lot of the time is how do you actually take an idea and go forward with it? How do you actually understand what you have to do without having to rely on a tutorial? And you know what? That's a good answer. Let's go Let's go answer that with this video series. So over the course of this video series, you're going to see a few things. We're going to explain some key concepts as well as how to best approach certain problem solving skills. Now, there are going to be gaps that probably are going to be missed. But what I want you to do is leave a comment below let me know what kind of things that you are a bit confused by or don't understand. So we're not going to go through the basics of explaining how the engine works or what, what you see on the screen, but more about the actual process of approaching a problem. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look at the engine. Okay, so I brought up just the first person template. I've not done anything special to it. Just opened it up. And one of the key things uh, I'm not going to do in this tutorial video series is explain like what the UI is and what the different types of uh, buttons do. Uh, there are plenty of tutorials out there that explain that and I've probably made a few of them myself. Now, what I'm going to do here is approach like, okay, well, how do you actually approach a problem for the first time when you're encountering it? So the main thing we want to write about is, first of all, understanding blueprint communication. And a big part of communication in blueprints is understanding things like inheritance and how references are stored and passed along. So the best way to explain blueprint communication is through inheritance, as that's the core concept that you have to worry about when you're communicating between blueprint to blueprint. So every actor inside our game is a child of actor it's an actor type class so it's an actor this an actor this an actor everything is an actor okay if you can place it in the world it's an actor and from that you have sub children of those actors and those children have their own functions have their own variables and, and so on and what you're mostly worried about doing is you're trying to figure out how to grab a reference from one thing and convert it over to another thing and that is basically how communication goes now, the best part to understand with communication is that you don't want to think about it in terms of, um, uh, I want to just grab hold of this door and take it open. You have to think of everything as cause and effect. So everything is a trigger, everything has a reaction to that trigger. So that's the best way to approach any sort of problem. So let's say, for example, over here, we were to make a, a simple blueprint class of a door and we will just go in here and we'll do a trigger of this door. So I want it to just move out of the way. Okay. So I'm not going to do anything special here. Just going to do all that type of door here and pop that into my scene. Okay. Now you may, if one of the first questions you can be asking is like, well, how the hell do I make this door open? Well, first we have to think about is like, what is going to trigger it open? Okay? And that's a common thing you have to be asking yourself all the time is how do I actually trigger this information what's going to be the cause of this information and a door is a great example uh, to start off with because they're used in every game they're very common uh, and very easy to manipulate and they have lots of little features that you can mess about with too so when you think about a trigger for this you can think about in in many different ways you can do things like an overlap which is pretty common um which is we'll go simply here to an event graph actually let's add a uh, let's go to a box collision and I'm just going to make that a little bit wider bring that in there like that okay and we'll just say when act to begin overlap happens the other actor is equal to the player character we'll say um, move the box move the cube set Relative location. I'm not going to do any fancy animation. I've got tutorials plenty on how to actually accomplish that. So, I'm just going to small branch into my door here, like this. And the new location will just do negative 300. Okay. So, very simple. 
overlap trigger to move the door out of the way. And once again, we think about, okay, well, I want to bring the door back. The trigger is same. It's got to be uh, doing end overlap. Okay. So I could do an actor end overlap. And do the exact same code, basically. Then it's location to zero. Okay, so a simple trigger and effect. Now, when that happens, there's information that gets passed along, and that is basically how communication is going to work. Is that the trigger uh, has a information that gives it. So on overlap, you get this actor trigger. Um, this gives you actor reference to the reference point of where which actor was the one that triggered it. Likewise, when you've got hit event, there's all these things that can be pass through as well, understanding what component hit it, what the other actor was, what the other component was, um, and, and so on. So all these triggers start off with a bit of information that's coming from the actual event itself. And that's super critical in how we get started, as that's usually your, your key starting point of understanding how to get from point A to point B in your communication. Once you've got that bit of information done, um, you can now manipulate it in interesting ways. So let's say, for example, I want this door to open with a different reference, a different actor. So let's say I want it to trigger with a uh, pressure pad. Okay. So we'll just do a pressure pad. And we'll just give that a cube as a uh, box to stand on and the overlap so very similar to the door and we'll just put that on pressure pad there okay and once again we'll just do the active again overlap like so okay um and i'm not going to worry about the movement of this we are just going to trigger something so we're making now the trigger something external to the door. So it's how do we get the pressure pad from, say, over here linked to this door over here? How do we communicate between these two? So to communicate that across, this needs to understand what to look out for. And okay, the door needs to react to this. And much like how the door is reacting currently to this overlap of the box collision, we need to make it reference something outside of that too. Okay. So rather than referencing itself with the end overlap and things like that, we need to write about the pressure pad doing this instead. So we have to make a link between these two. Now at the moment, these aren't tangibly linked. They are two separate actors. So to make them linked, we have to do that ourselves in this case. Okay, there's no trigger interacting with these two going on here. Okay. There are ways around this. I'm going to show you that in later. But first of all, let's start with the basic option. So the basic option is on the door here. I can just go ahead and add a variable reference to the pressure pad. Okay. So I can go pressure pad. And I'm going to search for the pressure pad reference. Now the light blue means it's a reference. It means it's referencing something in memory uh, that is existing in the game. Okay. An instance. And what I'm going to do is I make this editable by making a little eyeball icon on and exposing. Uh, actually, no, no, it's exposable, just an instance editable. And that means that I can now go to this door over here and indicate what pressure pad should be associated to it. So this door would now have a reference to that pressure pad. And you could do that because they exist in the same level. If you've got objects that are existing in different levels, they can't obviously do this because they're not loaded in at the same time. I mean, those references will no longer be valid. So be that, keep that in mind that you can't reference things from separate levels. You can only reference things in this level. Now, with that reference in there, it's still not tied to anything. It's not doing anything. It just knows that, that it exists. It doesn't know anything else. It just knows that, hey, I've got a link, an address to that pressure pad. But what I can do with that pressure pad is uh, bind an event to it. Okay, and the bindings are basically these over here on the right hand side. So you see these bindings got on take damage, any damage, on clicked, uh, when the actors hit it, end play, all these various things. Okay, 
And these are uh, events that are events been told to dispatch out to whatever you want. And so whenever you see anything like this on a detail panel, it basically just says this is an event dispatcher. And as you can see, a lot of them are built in. Uh, these are the actor ones that come in with all the actors. And I can go over here and go on actor begin overlap and hit this button over here. And I've now got this overlap feature for this. So now instead of this door being triggered by the actor begin overlap, I can use the actor begin overlap of the pressure pad instead. So I can do the other actor there, up there. And I can do the same for end overlap. Like so, okay. And if I hit compile and play, that door appears and disappears with this pressure pad. Okay, so we manage to communicate between the door and the pressure pad. Now, a lot of questions I get are like, how do you know you want the pressure pad to be referenced on the door while the door being referenced on the pressure pad? And yet, we turn you could do that either way, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can do it the other way too, you can have the door be a reference on the pressure pad and go across um so you want to basically want to develop your uh, own sort of uh sort of uh, workflow towards it i personally will suggest that it's better to have the referencing done on the uh, reaction object rather than the trigger triggering object the triggering object should be the one that's pretty much like just doing its thing reaction and the objects need to be looking out for what's going on and react accordingly so I tend to prefer to put those rep links on the things that are going to react to that. And likewise, I can have something else look at this door and react accordingly to that door when it opens and so on. Now, if I wanted to do that with the door, I need to have an event dispatcher. I need to know when that door has been opened. Okay, I can't just say, um, get the door and then get this event and and listen out for that event just right as it is so let's say let's make another something else here let's do another actor let's do a light and point light and i'm going to give it a variable for door the yeah, door type again an object reference because we're referencing an instance in the world but as you can see over here on the right hand side, I can still do event dispatches for that door. Oh wait, I'm going to make it ed editable. I can still make uh, event dispatches for this door. But as you can see, if I were to do react to begin overlap, it doesn't really account for that. It only accounts for the door overlapping, not the pressure pad overlapping. So how can I communicate that? And why isn't anything else like that showing up? Well, the reason why it won't show up the pressure pad in all that is because it doesn't understand that that exists. It doesn't understand where it's coming from. This is only a reference to the door itself. The door may not have a reference to the show. How will it be able to call event dispatches on it? So the trick to that is it got a couple of ways really. One is on the event graph, you can do a binding to the uh, overlap event of the door's reference to the pressure pad. Um, this is not a great way to do it. Um, so for example, if I do um, get pressure pad and then find event on overlap okay now with this i can now do a custom event and do the thing that you would expect over here um let's make a custom function in here a light on Do a little boolean. And deactivate. False. Okay. Uh, so I can just do this light on here. And I can turn it off and on based upon whether it's overlapped or end overlapped. Now the problem with this method is that it's not actually looking at the door, it's looking at the pressure pad. 
So the door is not turning the light on, the pressure pad is turning the light on. The pressure pad is doing the job of two things. It's just triggering, but it's doing the light as well. So what would actually be better is if you want to do like a chain of events. So the pressure pad is triggered, the door is opening, and then the light will now respond to the door. And you I mean both are valid ways and totally fine. I personally wouldn't like doing it this way because uh, the logistics of making sure that the pressure pad has got a reference that's valid. Uh, you're relying on two valid references, basically. You're making sure the door's valid and also the pressure pad's valid. Whereas what your much safer way of doing this is using an event dispatcher. So an event dispatcher, we can add on a door here. Door opened. And we can also give it a variable to pass Kong. Yeah. It's open. And when so when act begin overlap happens, I can drag in the ball here. And when it closes, call it not to open. And now I've got those event dispatches on it. I can go to this door event. You can see here door opened is now appeared in my event dispatcher list. I can click on that and bring in this. So this first method is looking at the pressure pad, not the door. The door is just being used as a way to reference the pressure pad. Whereas this one is looking at the door and responding to the door doing its thing. So ultimately the same sort of job, but I say this is a lot cleaner, a lot neater way of doing it. And another nice thing about this is that it doesn't matter if the door reference is not valid. It won't cause any issues. Where's this wheel? So let's go and look at that for example. And we go light. And there we go. And give that the door there. And uh, apologies, one thing I need to do is with the light, realize we can't activate and deactivate point lights. You can, or any light really. You just set the visibility of it. So set visibility. Bit nicer because we just plug it straight in. And I'll just set it to be not visible. Oh. There you go. Okay, so if I go into the thing now, it'll turn the light on as well as open the door. And that's because the, the domino chain of the pressure pad is being triggered, the door is reacting to that, and then the light is reacting to the door. And it's that sort of chain that's a lot nicer to follow. A lot safer way of doing it and uh, less confusing i find so the best thing to think about is like how do you communicate between blueprints is it's like a chain of events you have to think about how you're going to chain information across and how you're going to pass through what information you want and through just referencing the light i've not know anything about the pressure pad it only knows about the door but because the pressure pad is interacting with the door the door is interacting with the, in, the, in, uh, the light now, there's a lot more to do with in interactions and blueprint communication. I'm going to write about that more so in the next part as well, where we talk a bit more about inheritance and how that affects things too. Hopefully this gets you started on the general understanding how to communicate from blueprint to blueprint. In the next part, we're going to continue this uh, journey and look at uh, more in inheritance and how we can inherit uh, different uh, functions and variables and, and why you'd want to make certain things children classes of other things. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady where you watch all my videos early before everyone else. A massive thank you to all our Patreon members and YouTube members for the continued support. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next. Bye everyone.